So let's start again. So who wants to give us an example of the challenges of red in their country? Just briefly. To give an example, it doesn't need to be based on like real world information, eh? just as a thinking process. Imagine you are the Ministry of Environment in your country and they say, yeah, somebody comes like Norway, we are going to help you get ready for red. What are the challenges? In which parts should we invest? Yes? Uh, first of all, I think the lack of political will. Uh, which country first, sorry? Botswana. So we're talking about Botswana? Yes. The uh, Ministry of Environment is going to give us advice on how to do it red in Botswana. Yes. Great. Uh, the lack of political will uh, to really welcome these great initiatives. Then the lack of information to the locals. You know, if someone doesn't know something and you <coughs> probably come and tell them for the first time, they can't comprehend it at first. So mm -hmm. sensitizing what is a red project and yes. what might be maybe the benefits to the local people. Yes, okay. and also probably involving the, the, the mm. local community into whatever team that is set up so that they feel part of it and mm -hmm. play a role. So they yeah. take ownership of the project. Yes, uh -huh. you know. But then so sometimes the policies that we have in our countries can limit some of the great initiative. initiatives to come and play a role in our countries. So I think when the red, if they will come to Botswana, they have to like go through our policies, you know, have consultation engagements mm -hmm. with uh, both government, mm -hmm. NGOs, and the locals first mm -hmm. before we can try to. So the two important points: we need to get the stakeholders involved at the national level, yeah. like government, but obviously also at the local level. Yeah. And second point is that we need to understand what it means to be able to assess if we are interested. Yeah. So that's another problem or another challenge. And I would add one. So what about your country? Do you think you have a lot of trees, maybe a reforestation project better than avoided deforestation? What do, would you suggest? Um, okay, just an example. Well, we are trying as a country to have uh, restoration programs mm -hmm. and for savanna woodlands yes, yes. woodland mm -hmm. uh, and especially in the wet areas uh -huh. uh, in the Okavango Delta mm -hmm. but I think the challenges we are meeting in the Okavango Delta is the whole the human wildlife conflict now mm -hmm. we have to set a boundary to say this is a protected area we have to like uh, have you guys who uh, stayed in the area move out so that we can fence the area so people used to live in that area mm. you know just taking them out from mm -hmm. that area you know their lifestyle their livelihood has to change, change. Mm -hmm. and who's gonna come for that mm -hmm. you know, so and another question so do you have your calculations ready not yet ah uh, so maybe that's another challenge we need yes. are you going to use the estimates well for or you want to make your own maybe for me i think it's the first time to hear about rates mm -hmm. so from now I will work on the calculations. Work so you think it's also important to invest in making the calculations for your habitats, for your landscape? Eh? I think that's another challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank another you. example? Who is going to give us another example? Yeah? Yes, Minister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Minister. Okay, sorry, maybe here first because the camera is already here. So Minister of Environment in Kenya is going to give us some insights on the challenges in Kenya. Uh, Kenya has two main challenges when it comes to red projects. Mm -hmm. The first one is land tenure, because the high potential part of the country is only 18% and it is highly populated. So the high potential, mm -hmm. we're talking about the areas with more forests, with more maybe? Forests, mm -hmm. yes. We, we, these are areas which have more rainfall, mm -hmm. more forests, so you, you're able to get forestry going. And then these are also the same areas where plantation forestry is heavily practiced. So you've got assals which are 82% of the country. Assal is dry areas, eh? so, and areas. so maybe their trees don't grow very fast and they're not that many, but of course the surface yeah. is a lot more. But then those, now there is land tenure in assal areas because all our assal areas are under communal land mm -hmm. tenureship. So to get communities to, get, to agree to even lock out a part of land use, for that or maybe even to document yeah. if they have the documents proving yeah. where they live it's sometimes hard in some of these areas so mm -hmm. that is, that is the, the legal part then uh, the, when it comes to also calculations you find that the high potential areas with forests have a lot of numbers mm -hmm. but they are not representative 
of the drier areas. So maybe we need more research on the drier savannas and the drier open grasses. Uh -huh. Very good point. So it's not all about the forest. Uh -huh. And if our country we have a lot of other ecosystem and habitats, maybe we need to invest in quantifying carbon in these other ecosystems. And Very good. The challenge would be just to link it up with agroforestry because Asal areas are also being increasingly irrigated. So linking it there gets you more land under some under carbon sequestration than in high potential areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just because of the extent yes. we're talking because about extent, huge surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Able to get a million hectares in instead Asals. of like ten. Yeah. Ten, yeah. Yeah. Good point. I think we had another example as well. Yeah. In Rwanda, have wait, wait, is the Minister of Environment of Rwanda who's going to give us some insights? Mm -hmm. Yes? In Rwanda, what has been done is to review the law and the regulations related <coughs> to the forest. That is allow to, um, to allocate the bag, high budget in the deforestation. Mm -hmm. So and try to stop deforestation, eh? Mm -hmm. Yes, and to restore the natural forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in uh, any just uh, natural forest, uh, no regulations allow to cut a natural trees. Uh -huh. But I want to challenge you, eh? Yeah. Because I said to have a carbon project, eh? Yeah. We need to show that it's at risk. Yeah. So it's really hard to get a carbon project in a protected area. Yes. Because in theory, your government is already protecting this forest. So I think part of the challenge for Rwanda, as we saw the land cover, is that a lot of Rwanda is agricultural land and the forest left is already protected. Mm -hmm. So my challenge would be maybe for Rwanda we don't think about avoiding deforestation, maybe for, our, for this country it's better to think about reforestation, maybe agroforestry, yeah. That might be more important. Or wetland. Yeah. We mobilize our forest uh -huh. area. Because the few forests yeah. left are already protected. Yeah. So it's hard to justify <laughs> that they're at risk. Yes, another comment here? Can I chip in? Camera. Uh, I think we might have a protected area, which is protected by the government as an East Town Park, mm -hmm. but still. There's degradation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, it's not that I'm not saying not. Yeah. I'm just saying that to run a project, you need to show that it's at risk. Mm -hmm. And when you have a protected area, it's different if you have a nature reserve or if you have a national park. Okay. But for national parks, which in theory are the highest level of protection below World Heritage Sites, it's hard to prove that it's at risk. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's hard to prove. Right. So document it's needed. You, in this case, maybe you need to assess deforestation rates using remote <coughs> sensing to show that there's been reforest sorry, deforestation inside the protected area. But you know, it's hard to prove, eh? And at least I know for Rwanda that the last few years the forests have been very well protected. So how can they now come? I'm not saying for your country, eh, but tomorrow. No, no, we need to get carbon to save our forests. And they'll be, if I'm the consultant, the first question will be, your forests are already saved. If you want to get paid for carbon, you need to think outside of the forest. So it, that's why I say it's very important to think not just what we have, but what is the threat and how are you going to justify it? So maybe here, yeah, the threat is there. You can justify it by using remote sensing to show how there's been deforestation inside the national park. So not just think what is the threat, but also how you're going to justify it. Right. Maybe you want to have the last example? Yes. And then we move on. Our friends from Tanzania. The Ministry of Environment in Tanzania one of the pilot red countries in the world is going to give us some advice for the other countries. Please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, I just want to share with you some challenges related to red implementation projects in Tanzania. And uh, this goes back all the way 2010. But of course, things have started changing out slowly, but yes, these are some of the challenges. Uh, one of them is unclear and unstable land tenure system in Tanzania. Also makes uh, red implementation a bit difficult. So land tenure is a challenge. Yeah, we keep coming back to the same thing. Eh? Yes, yes. And you, you have just said about uh, carbon credits, how to sell them. Still very difficult. And this has led to some of the projects being abandoned 
because people don't really see immediate returns from Mm -hmm. no, keeping, uh, so this is what I said, is these high expectations about carbon, eh? that we get a lot of money soon. And we'll get a lot of money, but it's not soon. It's mostly at the end. So this is a big conflict, especially with local communities, yeah. because they don't see getting a lot of money, so they lose hope in the project and might give up. So yeah. dealing with expectations is very important. Another thing is um, it's all about law enforcement. Of course, we have set up the, the forest for REDS project. But people still continuing doing the logging, firewood collection, firewood collection, whatever. charcoal yeah. burning, and those kind of things. So in the end, it's like frustrate all the efforts of reds. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, so it's very important to take. How are you going to address the deforestation or the degradation? So thinking about how will you engage these local communities? Are we going to fence the park and put like thousand rangers? This is pretty expensive, eh? It's much better to find a way for these local communities to get maybe other sources of livelihoods and maybe we help them have agroforestry in their farms for firewood so they don't need to enter the forest. So dealing with the local community is very important. And uh, the last two is, one is corruption, but at least now it's going down. Mm -hmm. But you can say it's completely eradicated. So, yeah, but I think this is a very good point when we work in this continent. Corruption is everywhere. Yeah at different levels in different countries, but I would like to see a country that doesn't have it. I haven't been there yet. So it, it's, it's good to think about it because it means that the investment of setting this up and even keep it running has this extra money that we need to budget in. Yeah, sure. And the last one is a little bit mismanagement. You know, the technical know-how and how to deal with these things and how to prioritize things and those kind of things. Also can negatively affect implementation mm -hmm. of this project. Those are the things. So we can see there's a few challenges, eh? But I want to just say... There are, more, there are a lot more, yeah, yeah. But let, let's not be negative, eh? Let's not be negative. <laughs> so actually, I just want to end up with one thought, eh? That, that, I mean, it's related to what I said about the forest, that maybe as the climate change gets worse and these forests become even more precious, maybe they'll, it'll help us get the red process into place, eh? so to deal with some of these challenges.